Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Chaotic Entertainment. I'm your host, Daniel Clark, and today we're going to be discussing a topic that's been on my mind for ages. The idea that if a game does not pander or market directly to you, then something is very wrong and it must be changed immediately. Let me start by saying this. Video games are art. I cannot stress that enough. Between the literal millions that go into modeling, storyboarding, and soundtrack development, video games are very much art. The funny thing about art is that it's universally agreed upon that going to an artist and demanding they change their paintings to make someone else happy is not only a bit rude, but also makes you one of the worst human beings on the planet. Now, what about the customers that don't enjoy an artist's work? Do they have to just go the rest of their lives without ever buying any paintings or going to museums because they don't like that one guy's painting? If they don't like Beyonce, does that mean they can never listen to any music ever again? Well, if you've got anything besides a literal potato between those ears of yours, I'm going to assume you said no. Those people simply listen to a different artist, or for many, an entirely different genre altogether. Well, with video games, it's exactly the same thing. I'm sure every gamer has a game or two that they just flat out don't enjoy. That's part of being human. I can't imagine how bland and awful the world would be if we all lined up for the exact same things as each other. The reason I mention all of this is the extremely annoying trend I see with press coverage of games. The idea that if a game doesn't fit someone's style of play, or their idea of what a story should be about, then it's a complete failure on the game's part, and not a matter of personal preference. For a good example of what I mean, look no further than the media coverage around Dark Souls 3, or Sekiro, and the discussions of how the game being too hard is exclusionary. Well, of course it's exclusionary, that's the entire point. The absurd difficulty spikes are the primary reason why people play these games, for the pride and sense of accomplishment they get for beating an extremely challenging boss or area. As core fans of the franchise know, without the extreme challenge those games offer, the atmosphere and the tone of the games are thrown completely out of whack. Now, obviously that kind of challenge isn't for everyone, so naturally some people aren't going to play it or enjoy it. And you know what? That's fine. That makes perfect sense to me. If you know you're not going to have a good time, then I'd absolutely recommend that you don't buy those games. I can understand saying, I don't like this game, so I shall not play it. But what I don't understand is the sentiment of, this game is too hard for me, therefore it needs to change. How about another example, one that's not about game mechanics, but rather story and setting. Specifically, let's discuss the newest version of Call of Duty, Modern Warfare. Now, as much as the idea of calling Call of Duty art hurts my spirit, the game does have its own story, and chooses to tell it in a very rough and gritty campaign. Dean Takahashi, yes, that Dean Takahashi, has stated that it is taking war in a frightening direction, saying that the scenes with civilians make the game too realistic and disturbing for the game to be made. Not for him to enjoy it, no, he genuinely believes that maybe this game shouldn't be made. My response to Mr. Takahashi is this. This is the world they've created. This is the story they wish to tell. If you don't like it, that's absolutely fine. But it is never your place as a games journalist to tell a company what kind of game it should make. I'm not saying you should mindlessly purchase the game, but I am saying that if you don't like it, you're more than welcome to go back to playing Cuphead. Another loud example of this is people's reactions to fan service in games, such as Dead or Alive, Bayonetta, or pretty much any other game from Japan. These games have a specific audience they market to. Obviously not everyone shares my love of virtual waifus, but my question is, if these games have themes and characters that make people uncomfortable, then the easiest and most rational thing for them to do would be to simply not buy it, wouldn't it? Why must people demand developers censor or change these games if they know they're not the target audience to begin with? If you know you're not the target audience, is it that unreasonable to ask you to go play something else while people enjoy the game they want to enjoy? Why do their games have to change for your comfort when you don't want to play it in the first place? This isn't to say people shouldn't be allowed to complain about the shortcomings of a game. Believe me, if there's something genuinely wrong with a video game, as many people as possible need to know this so they can make smarter purchases. If a game has mechanics that are genuinely unfair, broken, or make the game completely unenjoyable to the majority of players, then that's an issue that absolutely needs to be addressed. But the easiest way to address that is, again, don't buy it until the developers fix the problem. After all, it seemed to work fairly well with Battlefront 2 and getting EA to start finally paying attention. A few major flops later and look, we've got an exciting new single-player, microtransaction-free Star Wars game coming out. This is a positive change. 
Anyone who understands the gaming industry knows that. It's not a secret that people are burnt out from the multiplayer shooters with in-game power-ups available for real money genre. The community is experiencing a sort of fatigue that's all too visible. However, this change was brought about by EA's core audience, the demographic throwing their hands up and saying enough is enough. This change is the result of EA listening to their customers, not from listening to activists or journalists who have nothing but contempt for the industry to begin with. What happens when publishers forsake or ignore their audience has been demonstrated rather clearly over the past year, especially when they do so to humor people on social media that aren't customers of theirs to begin with. Game companies have already seen that changing their product so that folks who aren't their fanbase might be more interested doesn't actually earn them more sales. Battlefield V taught EA that lesson the hard way, and Catherine being changed was met with the response of good, I'm still not buying it, but good. A fine sentiment, but it didn't raise any sales. If you're not entirely on board with everything I'm saying, then sit down and imagine for a moment that hordes of people were screaming at the Life is Strange developers for not having enough shooting gallery and special execution scenes. Imagine people raging at Overwatch for not letting me sit down and press X to talk out our problems instead of firing a thousand missiles at them from the air because they won't stop moving and I'm terrible at the game. Obviously, those people shouting and ranting aren't really fans of those types of games, so they obviously don't buy them. If that's the case, wouldn't it be a rather foolish decision to pander to them? My takeaway, or the TLDW for everything, is this. Game developers have an obligation to understand who their audience is and who it isn't, and should create their games accordingly. For everyone else, it's up to you to decide what to play and what not to play. It's not, however, up to you to decide who gets to make what and who gets to enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Chaotic Entertainment. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to leave a like and share this video with your friends, especially the ones that get angry with you for enjoying games that aren't quite their cup of tea. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you in the next video.